UV visible spectroscopy is widely used today because it is, of all the instrumental techniques, the one that lends itself to quantitative measurement and, in fact, is highly sensitive. So many quantitative measurements of organic compounds rely on UV visible spectroscopy. Let me give you a summary of the key facts about UV-Vis, as it's called. Absorption of light causes excitation of electrons. I'll comment briefly about that in a minute. The observed sample is not destroyed You observe many molecules at once. Its primary use is quantitative measurement. I'll explain that more. Provides some qualitative information. Mostly regarding conjugated pi systems. can be used for other things, but almost, almost entirely is used for conjugated pi systems. So let me say a little bit about each of these things. The light represented by lambda that's used is in the 200 to 800 nanometer wavelength range. And typically the 200 to 400 is considered UV. So the 400 to 800 is visible. The distinction between UV and visible is totally arbitrary. It is not very meaningful for us. And it turns out that the energy of light in this wavelength range is just the right amount of energy to cause an electron in a molecule to move from one energy orbital to a higher energy orbital the exact wavelength needed to cause that excitation is dependent on the specific functional group that we're talking about. And in particular, the functional groups that are pi systems, which are conjugated, tend to absorb light because of excitation of electrons in the 200 to 800 region. So some of those conjugated pi systems absorb in the visible light. That's what causes colors. Some of them absorb in the UV light. In any case, when we learn more about the bonding in pi systems and understand MO theory of pi systems, we can talk more about this electronic excitation. I also mentioned that the sample is not destroyed when an electron is promoted to a higher energy orbital, it stays there only briefly. This is what's called an excited state, and excited states return to the ground state 
a process that's called decay, rather quickly. So the sample is excited. You have an excited state, goes back to ground state. The sample overall is unchanged. You observe many molecules simultaneously. That's because you dissolve a sample in solvent. UV visible light is passed through that solution, and the amount of absorption of that light is measured. So as you're passing light through that solution, there are many, many molecules, gazillions of molecules in solution. And so we're observing what happens in terms of absorption with all of those molecules in that solution simultaneously. We're simply measuring the amount of absorption that the whole solution causes. I said that this is readily used for quantitative measurement, and that is the most important aspect of UV visible spectroscopy as it's used in today's laboratories. So I want to highlight that quantitative measurement. And that's through the application of a very simple equation. The absorbance that's measured as light passes through the sample is equal to a concentration of the sample times a very specific number times the path length. This path length is typically set at one centimeter, so its numerical value is one and it goes away. This is a value called absorptivity. Sometimes it's called A, which makes sense, absorptivity. The E derives from extinction coefficient, which is another term for the same thing. I mention it because you may well see references to extinction coefficient, and that's the absorptivity. So it's structure specific. To know the to know the extinction coefficient or absorptivity, you actually have to have a sample and measure it. It's not a value that you can just guess or calculate theoretically. But you can look it up in a table once it's known. And now you can see how this can be made, used for quantitative measurements. Rearranging this equation, the concentration is simply equal to the absorbance that's measured divide, divided by the extinction coefficient or absorptivity. So concentration is easily calculated and the absorbance is typically so great for conjugated pi systems that this is a very sensitive technique. So you can detect even very small amounts of material. And I say that UV-Vis provides some qualitative information, and that's because pi systems that are conjugated absorb in predictable regions of the wavelength spectrum. So when you look, for instance, at a structure that has this conjugated pi system as a portion of the structure, it's possible to know about where the absorption of this molecule will occur. And that will be different 
from this pi system, which also has two con conjugated bonds, but these are both carbon-carbon bonds, and it will absorb in a different region of the spectrum, exactly where a compound absorbs in terms of wavelength of light is known as the lambda max. And this is also compound specific. But again, structural elements like this will absorb in roughly the same place. So the lambda max of a particular compound having a structural element like this is reasonably predictable. So we'll know about where we expect it to come. And so when we have an unknown structure and take the UV visible spectrum, we can look at the lambda max and get some good hints about what conjugated pi system would be resp res responsible for that absorption. So there are two key pieces of data obtained from a UV visible spectrum. Concentration and lambda max. The concentration is obtained by measuring the absorbance when we know the extinction coefficient. The lambda max is simply measured by looking at the spectrum. So let's look at a spectrum and just get a quick feeling for what these are like. Here's the UV vis spectrum of a compound 2-butanone. having two methyl groups on the alpha carbon. This compound doesn't have a conjugated pi system, but carbonyl compounds themselves have some absorption, modest, relatively small absorptivity. And so here is a spectrum obtained of tubutinone. The two key pieces of information are the absorbance. So when we look at the maximum absorbance for a particular wavelength, we can use that to calculate the concentration as we have talked about. And the second piece of information would be the lambda max. And the lambda max is the wavelength at the maximum absorption in the spectrum. Notice too that this uh, spectrum has a very uninteresting shape. Just a great big broad curve. And then over here there's another one that looks like it's going to become a great big broad curve to the left. This actually is an absorption that is very strong outside of that 200 nanometer UV range that our instruments can observe. So the only one that's relevant is this lambda max for this large absorption here that spreads out over a long range of wavelengths. And we're really interested in the maximum lambda, the lambda at the maximum absorbance, lambda max. And so for this compound, tubutinone, we'll report the lambda max and the absorbance for a particular com concentration, absorbance which is measured simply by looking at the axis to the left. And that's what a UV visible spectrum looks like. You dissolve the sample in a solution, pass the light through, Use a variety of wavelengths as you're passing that light through. Measure the absorbance of those wavelengths. 
Note where the absorbance is the greatest, that's the lambda max. And note how much absorbance happens, that tells you the concentration. The reason this is used so widely in laboratories is because this calculation of concentration is very accurate and can be applied to very small amounts of materials. So it's used to detect compounds that are being separated using specific instruments for separation of organic compounds. And it's used to detect quantitatively the amounts of material that are in a particular solution. Is this important? Heck yes. Most of the measurements that are made on biological fluids are much measurements that are made using UV visible spectroscopy. And finally, yeah, yeah, this also is important because, as I mentioned, the excitation of electrons extends way off into the visible range, the 400, 100, 800 nanometer range. And absorptions from excitation of electrons in that range actually cause materials to be colored because some of the light's absorbed and the rest of it is reflected. And so our colored materials, whether they're natural ones like the green and chlorophyll, the leaves, uh, reds, blues, the dyes and clothing, all of these colors are the result of UV visible spectroscopy. Excitation of electrons from a ground state configuration to an excited state configuration. This very same process that we're using for UV visible spectroscopy. So yes, derives its importance because it imparts color and because it's readily used to quantitate the amounts of a wide variety of compounds at very low concentrations.